What is up? Today I'm here to tell you what I love and what I hate about this 2024 Can-Am Outlander XT is an 850. So I'm going to start with the pros, what I love about this machine. This is probably one of the most comfortable machines I've ridden on. Stupid comfortable. I mean, you really can't beat the looks with the XT. This thing right here with the bumpers and just the overall look of it, it it's just, it's slick. One of the other features I absolutely love is sport mode. Sport mode on this, the best way I could describe that to somebody who's never rode one of these, who's never ran something with sport mode, is, um, so this has three different modes on it. So there's work mode, which is extremely slow, and that is very comparable to like a 90s model dually diesel truck. It's got torque for days, but you aren't doing anything fast. And then there's normal mode, which is equivalent to a normal typical v8 sports car it is quick it is nimble it's fantastic to drive but when you flip on that sport mode it's kind of like uh hopping into something like a hellcat where it is a completely different machine going from normal to sport mode it is wild i love it the only con with it is every time you turn it off you have to put it back into sport mode not that big a deal one of the other things i love about this is um the headlights, I mean, I really don't ride that much at night. I've fired this up at night to take a look around. Uh, maybe I'll see some more ride time during the summertime this year at night. These headlights, this came with uh, LED headlights. These are bright, like you could see me on Google Maps from space, you know, uh, astronauts, they're able to see me on Mars. These are, I, I cannot, they're brighter than my truck's headlights by far. A, a light bar on this would be an absolute waste of money. Uh, and pointless it would do nothing that's how bright these lights are they see so far it it blew my mind how bright they are the xt model comes with all kinds of extra stuff one of those being a winch and i'm glad i do because i got it stuck the first day i had it uh, not necessarily stuck but got myself into a pickle um, where the only way i was getting out was going up and i wasn't sure if it would make it that much of an angle so i winched myself up it while i was going up it I've already ruined the factory winch cable. Don't get me wrong, could be me, could be my own fault. I swapped it out for a synthetic cable. This is a fiery red is what it's called. This was like 50 bucks on Amazon. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll put a link on there if uh, anybody happens to need a winch cable too in the description. But so far it seems to be holding up. I had to pull the whole winch to swap it. I know that was a little inconvenient, but not a big deal. So it is pretty quick and a little bit weird for me to get started. You click that over, you press this, and there you go, you got all that. I've had this thing, uh, I think it's 65 miles an hour. This actually keeps track of that, which is really cool. Yeah, that's the fastest I've had it so far. It's a little too cold to uh, be out here going that fast up until today. Gives you a whole bunch of data on it, which is really cool. The engine temp, which I, uh, I had to keep this on and watch it. I managed to cake the radiator full of mud. Battery voltage, there's a, there's a whole lot in there. Um, as you can see, I got about eight and a half hours. I've had it about a month, 64 miles. But this thing's a blast. A big pro that these come with is the brakes. The brakes on these, this thing, it, it stops like nothing I've ever ridden before. My LTZ 400 doesn't stop this good. And this is twice the weight. It's probably twice as fast, too, honestly. Um, I will run them at some point against each other. And we'll see what happens. Now for the cons. And this is going to be a hard one because I, I don't really... I had to really look at some stuff to find flaws on this machine. Um, just and It's more like pet peeves. They're really not that big a deal. So one of the things that I don't like a whole lot of is the fact that there's so much electronics. This is the key. Now, it seems sturdy. I don't know. Hopefully it holds up. Kind of weird, but you put the key on, the machine does nothing. To turn the machine on, you have to turn it on right there. Get that. Everything goes up up there. Fire it up. See? It's just that thing. The 
the electronics are a um, it's a give and take thing this is not easy to steal like with this key this is programmed to my machine so unless somebody has the um what i think they call it i'm wanting to call it bars but that's definitely wrong it's Can-Am's uh, special programming system to be able to program a key to it. Now, all I have is the sport key, which is all I want because I'm not going to... The work mode is lame. One other thing that I'm really not a fan of is this back here. I wish this had some kind of better storage. As you can see, it's wet and dirty no matter what. That seal does not shut, and it is a pain in the ass to get that shut. There's a technique to shut it. I mean, you've got to put some force right right there to get that thing to shut i mean again that's it's minuscule really not that big a deal i'm gonna get one of those storage boxes for the link system which is really cool i really like that they made it possible for us to just connect something and look factory the only like and it's kind of weird a lot of it's my riding style and maybe it's just me but the fuel mileage on this thing is it's wild i get no fuel mileage I burned through this fuel so fast. So as you can see, we're at two bars. We've got eight and a half hours of ride time on this machine, and I think I've filled it up four times. And I always, I'm always filling it up right around the two bars because that's about when we go ride again. 64 miles, four tanks of fuel, and I think it holds like four gallons, five gallons. I mean, that seems like quite a bit. I am heavy on the throttle. Um, and on that note, being heavy on the throttle. This thing is a pain in the ass to clean. That is probably the one thing I don't like about it. And it has to do with the racks and the bumpers. And I've washed this thing twice since the last time I rode it. And every time I look at it, there's more dirt coming out of somewhere. Getting up underneath these racks is a pain to wash. Now, these spots right here are super sharp. Not, I say, they're not super sharp, but they're sharp. So when I was washing it the first time, getting up underneath there with the rag, because for some reason when it starts throwing mud, it manages to end up all up underneath this rag. I had a ton of cuts all over my hands. Next time I wash this, I'm pulling the racks because you can't really get underneath it without it. You can kind of tell right here where I missed up underneath there. Even with the pressure washer, it's just so hard. And then you got so many cracks and crevices. See, I didn't even get that right there. And I bet the inside of my taillights are full of mud. Headlights are the same way. They just kind of cake. It has been cold. It's harder for me to deal with it in the cold. And I, uh, I get it. You guys from up north may not understand my cold, but I can deal with 110 degrees. Um, 30 is a no-go for me. Another thing that I've had a few issues with, and I had a guy tell me that this will probably break in over time as everything kind of wears itself in. It is still a new machine. These shifts. So pretty much, and that's probably the easiest it's ever been as I'm doing it right now. Yeah, see, it doesn't want to go up there. So when it's in, when it's running, sometimes you have to, you go to put it in reverse and you want to put it in forward, it won't. I got to pop, put it in, you know, blip, blip throttle just a little bit and bring it back. And then it'll let me switch to high. I mean, aside from that, I mean, like I said, it's all like really pet PV to find the cons on this thing. This machine is a beast and I absolutely love it. I mean, the, the stuff that I have issues with is just so tedious. Um, these front bumpers aren't near as stout as you think they are. I kind of barely clipped my buddy's sportsman. Um, he was pulling me out of a hole. My tires were caked in mud. We were too close together. There was not enough room for me to stop. Barely clipped him. And now you can see one of my front bumpers sits a little, one side of my front bumper sits a little bit closer to the plastics. Now, don't get me wrong, without that bumper, I probably would have broke the headlights and I'm not gonna lie, those look expensive. One of the things I do plan to buy for this thing are the footwells that clean out easier. I'm, drawing a blank i'll put a picture of it on the screen i have it screenshotted basically these will cake with mud and the, these little bitty holes will not let it drain won't let it come out quite as easy so i want to get some 
that are like that and they fit their their factory can am so they fit right if you're looking into getting an outlander and you're on the fence this machine is where it's at i and i thought i wanted a 1000 so bad and honestly this 850 is more than enough a 1000 is a little more power would be a little more uh umph but like this thing if i put it in low and give it gas on some grassy terrain it'll stand up so this, it's, it, it does not lack in power. There's, and all my cons are so minuscule. I mean, you, you get such a nice machine for the money. Here in the, in the future, when it warms up a bit, come spring, I will do a top speed run on this thing to see how fast it'll go. I, uh, I'm also gonna put some of the mods that we're doing to it on, on the channel. And if you want to see, I'll do a one-year review as well and let you know how it works out. The, the, the biggest, scariest thing to me, and it may not be a big deal. You know, I don't want to be that guy who's like, I don't want a truck with electronics. Give me an old square body. That'll last forever. You know, my F-150's got a bunch of electronics. got 200,000 miles on it, and at least it holds a transmission. Except for like one of these 4 l 60 es crapping out every time you take it somewhere. But the electronics do scare me a little bit because this is an electrical system that I'm not familiar with. I know, you know, my knowledge is like to 2015 machines. I have really haven't messed with much newer than that. But I think it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna do some build on it. I, I think I might do a small lift. That may turn into a big lift. I was looking at the six hoops, we'll see. So be sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see more of this content coming soon. Thanks for watching.